somebody uh, lo loses uh, signal or something like that. But let me just change something. OK, so I'm going to record it. I recorded last lesson, the practical lesson, um, so that your supervisors can give you access to it. It's actually on YouTube. Um, I, I record them and put them onto YouTube and you can do that. Right, Ushirika, many more students coming in. That is good. And Glory, you are looking cool. I like the hat. It's a very good hat. Uh, and... Uh, Oh, yeah. Glory looking very sharp today. Looking looking smart. Silver Spring. I don't know where Genesis has gone, but they've disappeared. But I, I hope they're still with us. OK, so I will t I will show you what we are going to do. This is my uh, list of the chem uh, of the chemistry we are going to try to do today. OK, it is quite a lot. It is quite a lot of chemistry. Um, I'm going to look at energy, energy level diagrams. I am going to look. This is an important question here. This one here about solubility and hydration and lattice enthalpy. We will look at those or energy. We will look at how we measure. This is about how we measure enthalpy or energy. It's all the same. You have a possibility that you will have to do one of these. I showed you one last time in the laboratory. There's a possibility you have to do one of these. And then I'm going to do some electrolysis, some electrochemical stuff, which is really all form four. And if I can give you a small amount of information about it, it will make life a lot easier. You also have to do some electrolysis. Now, we have done some electrolysis when we were talking about extraction of uh, sodium and chlorine and aluminium and so on. That was very important. Um, so that's where I am going today. And there is quite a lot of information. I will record it, so hopefully you will be able to see it. So I'm starting with this, but I'm going to come back to the classes and I'm going to ask you how you feel about energy level diagrams and so on. OK, so can you show me the yes, no, perhaps? Um, how are you confident about delta H and enthalpy and heat energy? Uh, Ushirika, do you know a lot about energy or do you know not very much about uh, energy? Not very much. OK, Socorro. Nice to see you, Socorro. Great. We've got five centers. That's great. Uh, Socorro, are we uh, good on energy or not so good on energy? Go good, not so good. Come on, Socorro. Come on, wake up, wake up. Come on, we need to get on. Uh, good, Genesis. Genesis are feeling okay. Glory, how do we feel? Good, not so good about energy. Good, not so good. Hello, Glory. More Glory. Okay. Come on, Glory, be brave. Silver Spring, good or not so good? Okay, I get that. Well done, Glory, finally. OK, not so good. All right. So we're going to do some stuff on energetics and energy. And I'm going to talk to you about that first. And I'm going to introduce you to some technical language. And uh, it's very important that we, we sort of get this stuff. OK, so here we go. So I'm going to use the oh, no, wrong one. Sorry. Sorry. <coughs> wrong screen share. My apologies. Let, where has it gone? Here we are. OK, so I need to get all of this out of the way. OK, so there are some words which you need to understand and some titles. Oh, look, there is a little heart up here. That is good. My heart is black. There we are. That means that I am unhappy. That is just stupid. Um, we need to know the words exothermic and endothermic. We need to know the symbol, this, OK? We need to know uh, things like the energy of activation, OK? And then we need to know a lot of other enthalpy changes. And the word enthalpy is very important. Sorry, that's an H. Enthalpy is very important. So 
very very quickly um exothermic means gives out heat energy if you're asked what it means it gives out heat energy it gives out energy it may be just heat it is more likely to be heat and perhaps some light like if you have a fire if you light a fire if you're cooking and you light a fire uh, then this is an exothermic reaction therefore endothermic is takes in heat energy so these are definitions which you have to be able to give this funny symbol here it is pronounced it is said delta h whoops sorry delta h this here this is a greek letter and the greek letter means change okay so it's the change in heat energy so this the triangle here that is a letter meaning meaning change in h heat energy okay it's the change in heat energy so that's what it means it is said it is uh, the how we say it is delta h but it means change in heat energy and there is something rather important about this and that is that for exothermic reactions delta h is negative for endothermic reactions delta h is positive okay that that's a very important starting point in all of this okay so I will give you an example of an equation. You have seen these before, I'm quite sure, but this is an example of an exothermic reaction. So I'm going to give you an example down here. And if I burn this, which I know you know is methane, whoops, and I add uh, oxygen to it, I will leave you to balance it just for a minute. You can just see if you can balance it. It forms gaseous water, that steam. We write delta H equals negative 890 and it's kilojoules per mole. OK, that's what it is. Now, the bit at the end here, this here, tells me what quite a lot about this reaction. What it tells me is that when the reactants that's the chemicals which react together turn into the products they lose they give out 890 kilojoules per mole that is a lot of energy that is a lot of energy now you probably spotted how to count how to balance this there is one carbon, there are not enough hydrogens, we need two waters, and therefore we need two oxygens. That will balance it. That doesn't change the delta H. Here's a different example. If I take ammonia, NH3 is ammonia. If I take two of these, they react in a reversible reaction to form nitrogen and three hydrogens they're all gas but the delta h for this is positive 90 kilojoules per mole so in this case this means that it is taking in heat okay that's really important that this add here that means endothermic okay so endothermic it it will absorb heat from the surroundings whereas the one higher up this one here this means exothermic okay it is giving out heat now we can write equations like this and that's okay but we need to understand what is happening in the reaction 
And it goes like this. When the methane in the top equation, when the methane, which I'm going to highlight so you can see it. So when the methane here reacts with the oxygen, the oxygen and methane has to break apart. It has to fall into pieces. And then it forms the new chemicals, carbon dioxide and water. And what we're going to do is we're now going to look at that reaction in a bit more detail. And then we will understand what is happening. So if I have methane, it looks like this. And if I have, whoops, sorry. <laughs> and if I have oxygen, it looks like this. And my, my equation tells me I need one methane and two oxygens. These are then going to break into one carbon, four hydrogens, and four oxygens as atoms. Then these will recombine to make the carbon dioxide and two waters. And what happens if we look at the energy is this. If I draw a graph, many of you will know this anyway, but in case you don't, if I draw a graph and energy is up the side here, then the, where the starting point is here, and we would normally say that is energy zero. So here I have my CH4 and my two oxygens. We then have to put in a lot of energy for it to become the pieces here, the, the uh, the carbon and four hydrogens and four oxygens. And then they fall down the other side, lower, to form the carbon dioxide and two waters. And what is happening is that in this first part here, uh, let me change the color. In here, this bit here, we are breaking bonds. And then as we go down the other side, we make, this is make, whoops, new bonds. Now sometimes they ask you to do the calculation of this. So I'm going to show you this calculation. I'm go we're going to go through it very, very quickly. I'm going to show you how it works. OK, so that's how this is. This is the whole idea. So the starting point, if these are the beginning chemicals here, then this is here. Then we move to the, the chemicals which are here. And this is here. And then we get the chemicals at the end, which are these ones here, and they're down here. OK, so that's what's happening. So we're going from yellow to green to pink, from CH4 and oxygen into pieces, and then into carbon dioxide and water. Now, the calculation is based on bond energies, and here are the bond energies. Don't forget, I'm recording this. So if you want to look at it afterwards, you can. So here are the bond energies. I'm just going to write you down the bond energies. Because this allows us to do the calculation. So the bonds that I need to know about are these bonds. Here. A CH, uh, sorry, this is the delta H. This is the energy needed to break the bond. This one is 412. Oxygen to oxygen is 496. Carbon to oxygen, you don't, do not have to remember these. You never have to remember these. They will give you these in the, uh, in the exam, in any exam. And this is 463. So if I go back up just for a minute, I can see that here, up here, I have to break 
one, two, three, four carbon to hydrogen bonds. So that means I'm going to have to break, I'm going to have to use this four times. So I'm going to, to start with, I'm going to use four times 412. I also need to break one, two oxygen to oxygen double bonds. Okay, so four times 496. And that is going to be, this is needed to break the original bonds. And then we make some new ones. I'm going to change the color so you can see where I am. So now I'm going to make one, two C double bond O bonds. OK, so I'm going to make two of those and they're worth 743. So I'm going to make two times 743. OK, this is the two C double bond O. Uh, over here, perhaps I should have said that's four CHs and this is four. Oh, I am so stupid. What am I doing? Look, I have made a mistake here. Look, somebody should have called me out here. I'm breaking only two oxygen to oxygens. My apologies. You see, I'm talking too much and not concentrating. This is two, not four. Teacher Mark is having a bad day. This is two times oxygen to oxygen. Now, the two times 743 are for the two uh, carbon to oxygen there. There. And now I want to make one, two, three, four oxygen to hydrogen. So four times 463, that's four HO bonds. And that will be the energy given out when the new bonds form. Now I'm going to give you a moment just to uh, work this out, just to see if you can work it out. But I want to point something out. And that is that breaking the bonds costs you and it is positive. But making the bonds gives out energy. So this number here on the left in black added to the negative number here will be the total change. So see if you can do the calculation now. Just see if you can work it out. So you're looking for um, the 4 times the 412, 2 times 496 all added together. So we've got to add those together. And then we've got 2 times 743 and 4 times 463 added together, which is going to be negative. OK, see if you can just do that now. Just see if you can do that. I'm just working it out myself, so I will give you the answer. Well, you will give me the answer in just a minute. OK, I'm going to stop sharing just for a minute. OK, I, you may not have written it all down. We're just going to have a look at it. Um, so 
Um, has anybody got an answer for the whole thing? Does anybody anybody think they've got an answer? I'm going to go through. I'm going to show you how to do it. I promise. I'm not going to just leave you and say it. Has anybody there got an answer? Anybody? Oh, Ushirika. Ushirika, they're keen today. That's very good. Well done, Ushirika. And uh, John, you've got some good students there. Uh, Dan, how's Glory going? Have you got some answers? Genesis, you're looking keen. Come on. Socorro, you're looking very silent. Silver Spring. Oh, hang on. What do we got there? Further down. Uh, 4824. OK, well, that's some of it. That's some of it. Uh, we're going to have to put those two together. We're going to see how. OK, I'll show you. Has anybody got the total answer? Oh, somebody's passing one in Ushirika. Let's have a look. Uh, what have you got? Hold it still. I can't quite see it. Hold it just a bit, just hold it a little bit closer and more still, please, and I'll see it. Say, say it again, please. I'm afraid your microphone is not very good. I'll show you. Don't worry. So everybody. <laughs> Wow, yes, nice one. Wow, Ushirika, leading at the moment. Okay, so I'll show you how to do it, everybody. I'll show you how to do it. It's not it's not difficult, and this is a question which they really regularly ask. Okay, they really regularly. So let's have a look at how we do it. Okay. So so what we have to do is we have to go, all right. I'm just gonna um tilt my application a little bit. So forget about this just for a minute. So this here, that there, would be uh, 1648. Uh, this would be uh, 992. So those two added together would be 2640. That is the amount of energy we have to put in to break the bonds to start with. Then we get, uh, let me just, whoops, hello, what has happened here? Ah, oh, right, okay. Um, then we get this on this side. Two times uh, 743 is 1486. And four times 463 is 1852. And those added together will be 3338. Now the point is, this is the important bit, that what you've got to do is to remember that on this side it is endothermic, whereas on this side it is exothermic. My students remember this. They remember this stupid word, well, these two stupid words. This is to remind you that breaking bonds is endothermic, but making bonds is exothermic. And if you can remember that exothermic is negative and endothermic is positive, then all we have to do at the end is add these together. In other words, it's positive 2640 plus negative 3338, which will equal negative 698. And that will mean that CH4 plus 2O2 goes to CO2 plus 2H2O and delta H is negative 698 kilojoules per mole. Now, there's a problem with this. There is a problem. And they sometimes ask you this question. And the question is this. Earlier, I said to you, that to burn one mole of methane was 890. If I measure it, it is 890, not 698, not 698. The point is that those bond energies are average values. If we say that CH bond is 412, that is an average of carbon to hydrogen in every molecule. And some of them, it's a bit stronger. Sometimes it's a bit weaker. And so when we measure the burning of methane and it is 890, that is accurate. That is really good. 
And when we calculate it with bond energies, it is an approximation. So 698 is an approximation, but it is still negative. It is not as good as the 890. OK, so let's go back to the share. I need to go back and share. So let's see what this what this looks like now. OK, so now I can draw what we call the energy profile properly. So now my diagram looks like this. I have my methane and my two oxygens and they're going to go whoop, up and down and over here is CO2 and two waters. And I know it needs to go up from here to here. It needs to go up 2640. Up. I have to add that. And from there, all the way down is 3338. Three, three, and that was negative, so it's going down. And the difference between the beginning, where we normally say zero, okay, so it goes up 2640, it comes down 3338. Three, three, the difference from here, from this point, uh, sorry, I'll make it like this, from here down to there, that is my 698, and it's negative. It's delta H equals negative that. And we have names for these different bits. So this here is the delta H for the reaction. This is the delta H, the change in enthalpy or the change in energy for the reaction. But there's one other that you need to know, and that is what we call this. And this, I'm sure lots of you know this. This is the energy of activation. Now, if you have uh, some methane in a stove and you switch on the methane, you need to light it with a match. The match is supplying this energy of activation. OK, that is what energy of activation is. Energy of activation is the minimum energy the molecules need before they can react okay before they can react so in other words if they crash into each other if the methane and oxygen crash into each other they will do nothing if they do not have in this case 2640 okay they need to have that energy that is what the match does to the uh, to the stove that is what it does it lights the stove okay uh, last thing before I move on to something a bit different and that is this is an exothermic reaction so what does an endothermic reaction look like well an, an endothermic reaction the energy profile looks like this I have energy up the side just the same and I have my reactants, that's the chemicals which I start with. But my products are higher. They are higher energy. So I still have an energy of activation, but it comes down and does not go down as far. So the energy of activation is still this from the starting energy here to the top of there. That's the energy of activation. But now we end up higher up. So now, and I'm going to change the color because I think of um, red as being hot and blue as being cold. So now the energy change is from here and it's up to there. OK, so this is the delta H now. There's the delta H and it's going up so it will be plus. Let's say it's a number like 400. It doesn't matter what the number is. This is, I have just invented this. Hey, look. Oh, no, that's stupid. Sorry. That's being my, me being childish. Um, so there, let's say we have this number 400. I'm just saying it. So 400 kilojoules per mole. The point is it must have this. Okay. If it's endothermic, it is plus. 
If it's exothermic, it is minus. Really, really important idea. Okay, I'm stopping sharing. I'm coming back to the classroom. Hello, is that okay? Do we do we sort of okay? Sort of okay? Yeah? Okay, excellent. Well done. So, big thing. If they give you bond energies, they are talking about breaking some and then making new ones. So you just you just add them up, you just count them, and, and that is how it goes. Okay? Alright, so that's the end of that bit on energy. You have to know how to measure it. And this is something which I said in the practical. Uh, when we were doing the practical, um, if you're asked to measure it, I will show you very briefly, not with a practical, but I will show you very briefly what they expect you to do. So here we are, going back to that screen. So sometimes they ask you to work out the energy produced by a fuel. They might give you a little spirit burner. And the spirit burner has a liquid in here, like something like, uh, let's say it is an alkanol. Whoops, alkanol. Okay, like let's say it is ethanol. Okay, in here. And it burns here. Hot flame. And what I do is I have a beaker here, uh, a container, and in here I have some water. And I have a thermometer. OK, and I watch what happens and this is what happens. So, whoops, hello, <laughs> hello. I'm sorry, that has become very small. I must have pressed a button that made it very, very, very small. Come on, get bigger. Right, here we are. So um, let us say that the temperature before, uh, let's say it is uh, 20 degrees Celsius. And after, let us say it is 70 degrees Celsius. OK. And let us say that we had uh, 200 cubic centimeters of water. OK. So the mass of water is equal to 200 grams. Because if you remember, one cubic centimeter equals one gram for water. That is very useful. So, so far, we have some piece of information about the temperature. We have some information about the amount of water. And then in the examination, they will give you something called the specific heat capacity of water. And this is a number, and the number is 4.2, and it is joules per gram per degree Celsius. OK, and so that is another piece of information. So we've got three pieces of information. Um, I'll pick that one. So we have this piece of it. Oh, hello. Come on. Come on. There. OK. So we have three pieces of information. To work out the amount of heat or the amount of energy absorbed by the water, we do this. We go the mass of water times the change in temperature. Remember this change like delta H, delta, this triangle means change in, times the specific heat capacity of water. OK, so this is that number there. This, the, the mass of the water is here and the chi change in the uh, temperature is found from the information come on pen work my pen is having a little bit of a moment there okay so to find the amount of energy produced uh, sorry absorbed by the water i go okay so the mass of water that is 200 grams. I multiply that by the change in temperature. That is 70 minus 20. That's 50, obviously, times 4.2. And this will give me the answer in joules, not kilojoules, joules. And that is very important. So you can do that now very quickly.
And that comes out as 42,000 joules. Is that right? Yes. Okay. 42,000 joules is equal to 42 kilojoules. Okay, just divide by 1,000. Then they might tell you that in the alkanol, they tell you the mass before and after. So the mass before, let's say, equals 2.5 grams, and mass after equals uh, 2.1 grams. Okay? So you can see from this that 0 0.4 grams of the alkanol, the ethanol, burned. Now what they do then is they say, okay, there are three marks for this. The first one is for finding this number here. Okay, is finding the amount of energy given out by the fuel and uh, producing the uh, heat rise of 50 degrees. The second thing they do is then they say, okay, now what we want you to do is to work out the delta H in kilojoules per mole. So what we need to know is we've got the kilojoules, that's up here we just did it, that's 42, that's 42 kilojoules, but we need to know the moles. Well, we know that we had 0 0.4 grams of ethanol, so what we have to do is to say, how many moles is that? So see if you can do that now. I'll tell you that the ram of carbon is 12, of hydrogen is 1, of oxygen is 16. So the RMM, the molecular mass, would be two 12s, six hydrogens and one oxygen, which is going to come out as 46. So the moles equals grams over RMM, which equals 0 0.4 divided by 46. So if, if that's the number of moles, that's not very much, is it? 0 0.4 divided by 46 is going to give me the number zero point and it often will be not a very neat number zero zero eight six nine and then probably i'm going to stop there so that's enough figures okay so going back so now zero point zero zero eight six nine six moles produced 42 kilojoules so what i have to do now is to go okay what would one mole produce you work it out Okay, hopefully you got an answer. Genesis has got, oh, what a, what a that's a big calculator. <laughs> that is the biggest calculator in the world. That is really good. I love that, Dan. That's really cool. So what we would have to do is we have to go 40, 42 kilojoules divided by the number of moles. Okay, and this is how you remember it. So you take the number of uh, joules which are produced or the kilojoules and you divide by the number of moles and uh, so i'm going to just show you how the whole thing is constructed because this is what they're asking you to do this is something that might turn up on paper three 
if they ask you to mix some chemicals or to do this sort of thing and all you do is do it this way okay so i'll just show you it last thing i'm going to show you just for the moment here we go all right so um what i do then is the total delta h equals the mass of water heated up times the change in temperature that is delta t is change in temperature times the specific heat capacity of water which they will give you you do not have to remember it is 4.2 but you don't have to remember it divided by the moles reacted or reacting whoops come on okay in other words we would go okay that's 200 times 50 times 4.2 divided by oh at, well, the moles reacting was 0 0.4 over 46 okay and that will give you your answer and that's that's how you do the whole thing okay some people remember it in in this way it's m delta t that is given the letter c over n n is the number of moles c is 4.2 m is the mass of water and it is only the mass of the water not the rest of the chemicals okay that's very important that that is that is the case okay so the the c is this bit here uh, and then we've got the mass of the water here we've got the delta t uh, which is the change in the heat which you can work out yourself and then we've got the number of moles down here okay that's the n okay all right okay i hope that is a little bit more useful i hope i hope that makes sense okay so that is uh, most of the stuff to do with uh enthalpy to do with energy they turn up in uh paper three where you have to do it practically they turn up in paper in, in paper one or two paper two is the one with longer questions and paper two is the one in which they might ask several different topics in the same question that is really quite important and they quite often have an energy bit so let's go back to what i was going to tell you about let's just go back so i was going to tell you so here we are this is we have now covered all of the first bit sorry this bit here all right that thing there um it that's what it is all about this second bit here relate heat of solution to hydration and lattice enthalpy uh, i'm going to look at but very briefly okay we have talked about here the quantitative determination that means finding out the numbers okay so we have done something where we were talking we were specifically talking about combustion but i've shown you how to do the calculation and it would be exactly the same for each one of these for every one of these, it would be exactly the same. The mass of water times the delta T times 4.2 divided by the number of moles. So this is the last bit I'm going to do here very briefly. This is about solution and hydration and lattice enthalpy. So I'm going to do that now. Are you still there? Silver Spring, are you still there? I know this is like, ooh, this is big, hard stuff. Glory, are you still awake? I think I can hear snoring from Glory. No, 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 oh, no, no, they're awake. Okay. Socorro, Genesis, Usharika, you're still there, still mostly awake. That's very good. Um, I sometimes get my classes to do something stupid. Okay. You ready? This is something you have to try. Okay. You have to have one hand on your nose. Okay, you try, you try this sometimes. You try it sometimes. Really, you can feel stupid. It's okay. I, I don't mind feeling stupid. Have one hand on your nose. The other hand goes between, with your chin, holds the end of your ear like this. Okay? Okay, I see like this. And then you have to swap them over like this. And this makes your brain work, both halves of your brain together. And you go, whoa. And you go this. And you're not allowed, if you're no good at it, you're not allowed to go, Bleh. Okay, so you go like this, 
and <laughs> cross over some of the people in Genesis. They're not brave enough. They're not brave enough. You see, you can do it and you can do it quite quickly. After a while, you can do it quite quickly. Your brain is about the size of a grapefruit, right? And it has a little bit in between the two halves of your brain and it doesn't connect very well. If you want your brain to work well, you have to get the two halves to work together. And this does that because you probably know that the the left hand side of your brain runs the right hand side of your body and vice versa. So you have to you have to train them to work together. Also, it makes you feel stupid, and that's good. Feeling stupid is good. I feel stupid a lot of the time. It's okay. It's all fine. Okay. So, lattice enthalpy and hydration energy. We have a, a little bit of time left. So, you probably know that lattice enthalpy... Sorry, I'll start again. Who has not heard of lattice energy? Who has not heard... Just put a hand up if you have not heard of lattice energy or lattice enthalpy have you all heard of it yes okay good <laughs> people people at Ushirika are still going like this stop now okay Ushirika, they're all crazy gloria grown up well done genesis very sensible oh no there are some people at the back of genesis they're not very sensible anyway so lattice energy is the amount of energy given out when a lattice forms we are always talking about an ionic compound like sodium chloride, magnesium oxide, and so on. It's when it forms. When we dissolve something, we have to break the lattice up. So when you put salt into water, the lattice has to break up. That's simple. Why it breaks up is because when it goes into the water, the ions are surrounded by water molecules, and then it is lower energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show I'm going to show you what that looks like pictorially, okay? I'm going to show you it on a picture. So here we go. So if I have a uh, beaker of water and I have a crystal of salt, then the salt is Na plus Cl minus Na plus Cl minus and they alternate all the way through the crystal. Obviously, they are way, way smaller than I am drawing. It doesn't matter. It is three-dimensional. Ooh, look, cube. And it is all the way through. It is just on and on and on. Okay. When that goes into the water, the water molecules, which are polar, as you know, because you know all about hydrogen bonding, delta minus, delta plus, delta minus, delta plus. When it goes into here, what we have to do is we have to break the lattice into pieces so that in here the Na plus is surrounded by water molecules where the water is facing the oxygens towards the sodium okay it is worth doing because that is now stable and the Cl minus has the same sort of thing happening except that oh I should change the color of that so there's the Cl minus, and this time it's the hydrogens which point towards it because the hydrogens are delta plus, okay? So we get this happening. And we call these, we call this round the sodium, we call this a hydration shell. Whoops, shell, okay? That's what it's called. And what is happening is this. In an energy sense, just like in the energy profiles I did before, two things have to happen. We start with the crystal, and we have to break the crystal. So this here, from this level here to there, is breaking the lattice. Okay? And then when it comes down the other side, down here, we are making bonds with the water. Now, this is very much like what we saw before. So this here, uh, sorry, wrong thing. This here is endothermic. 
Okay, this here is endothermic because we are breaking bonds. Aha, hang on. Bendo, do you remember? Breaking bonds was endothermic. And over the other side, we are mexo. Making bonds is exothermic. This is making bonds with the break with the water, and this is breaking the lat. Oh, sorry, wrong color. This is breaking the lattice. Okay. So what happens is this: um, the overall change in this case. I have got this is exothermic. Okay, it's going from here down to this level here. So this one would be exothermic, but it might have ended up higher up. So what we have to do is the delta H, when we make a solution, is equal to delta H lattice breaking, that is positive, plus the sum of what we call the delta H of hydration. Now the hydration is the amount of energy given out when the ions form these new bonds and this is negative. Okay this is negative. I'll give you an example. For sodium chloride solid going into a solution which will be Na plus Aq plus Cl minus Aq, the delta H of lattice is normally given as negative 771 kilojoules per mole. The delta H of hydration of Cl minus is negative three six four kilojoules whoops per mole now what is important here is that we can now um, work out the um, the energy of uh, the whole thing if we are given the delta H of hydration of Na plus which is 406 whoops negative kilojoules per mole. Now the thing that is difficult about this is spotting this. That means lattice making or formation. Okay and we need to break it. Now every energy change can go in either direction. So if I break something, that's endothermic. If I make it, that's exothermic. And they are exactly the same number, but opposite size. So in other words, up here, up here, if I want to break this lattice for sodium chloride, I am going to have to put in, I'm going to have to turn this into positive. Oh, hello, something's not, whoops, hello, what's happening here? I'm going to have to make that positive. So breaking the lattice is going to be plus 771. And I add that to the sum of the hydrations. Well, they are negative 364 and negative 406. So you can work this out now. Yeah, so let me just do it down here. Delta H of solution equals delta H lattice breaking plus the sum of the delta H hydrations. And this would be plus 771. And these are negative 364 and negative 406. So what is the delta H of solution? Yeah. 
Yeah. Is it positive or negative? Positive. positive. Are you positive? Yes. Yes, that's good. Now that seems unlikely, but it is only one. And therefore our, our whole diagram would look like this. We would go, okay, here is NaCl solid. I break it. That costs me 771. Then it comes down the other side and I get Na plus Aq and Cl minus Aq. And the difference is one. In other words, it is like uh, just going up one kilojoules per mole. OK, so going up. Uh, 771 and coming down now negative 364 and negative 407 means that we go up delta h oh wrong color sorry and it doesn't matter delta h equals plus one kilojoule per mole okay that's how we do it so you always have to remember just remember we have to break the lattice that is endothermic. We have to put the energy in and then we form new bonds with the water. I know this has been quite hard. I know that there's quite a lot of information. Um, I have sent to your um, supervisors some um, questions and answers for acids and salts. I'm going to send you some organic questions with the answers so you can study those. Uh, we will look at electro uh, chemistry next time and we will i will send you a load of answers for those as well uh, but next lesson in other words next week we will be back in the laboratory and i will be showing you the testing for organic and for inorganic chemicals okay so we'll if you have a chance try to look at those the testing like how do you test for a halide or for carbonate or for sulfate or for iron or for copper and how do you tell the difference between an alkanol alkanoic acid uh, eth uh, alkene and so on okay if you have a chance look at those before next time but uh, now I am going to say to you hang on Well, this here, question mark. Hakuna Matata. Hey, you're there, man. I see you there. Again. Okay, so I'm saying it to you again. This is sodium methanoate. Matata. Oh, you... Really? Oh, Shirika, think they know better. You really do? Ah, oh, yes. Well, you stay. You stay for a minute and then we'll have a look and see what you say. OK, Silver Spring, Glory, uh, Socorro and uh, Genesis. And oh, oh, Shirika, thank you very much indeed for being here. I hope you learned something, even if all you learned was connect the two halves of your brain. Try to connect the two halves of your brain fairly frequently and it will work better. Oh dear, Gloria, I've killed somebody there. Look, I, one of them has gone to... Oh, it's too much. All too much. Ah, oh, well. Oh, Dan. Hello. I will be with you in just a minute, Ushirika. Let me just say goodbye to people and then I will come to you, okay? So, thank you very... <laughs> very good, Silver Spring. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, Bye. Silver Spring. Bye-bye, Glory. Bye-bye, Socorro have already gone. Bye-bye, Genesis. Always love to see Genesis. Usharika, if anybody has a question and they want to stay just for a minute and ask a question, hang on just a minute and we will do it. But otherwise, I will say bye. Michael, how nice to see you. Cool. Cool. Bye, Yestin.
Bye, teacher Mark. Uh, bye, headmaster Thomas. Teacher Mark, bye bye. Bye bye, bye headmistress. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. bye bye, headmistress. Bye bye, headmistress. Quaheri. Will... Silver Spring. Quaheri. Quaheri. Don't forget, Scotland. Go, Scotland. Stupid. Right, Ushirika, you have a question. Will you unmute, please? And then we can uh, see what you want to say. I'm just going to pin you so I can hopefully. Oh, uh, hang on. I'm just going to pin Ushirika. Ah, something funny is happening to my hand. Okay. You and me, Ashirika. Excuse me, I have a question. Okay. You're you're very quiet, so I will have to listen carefully. Go. Please bring back the bottle that I can show you that the question comes from. Sorry, let me just turn it up again. Hang on, I've I've gone a bit quiet because it was noisy. Okay, try again, sorry. The question is, may you please turn the, your blackboard so that I can show you where the question comes from? Which one? The, the reactive mole. Yeah, where you've got 0 0.4 something, but our mole was 0 0.0869. Oh, okay. What did I write? 0 0.414. Well, it was it was the the moles. Um, we I think in my example it said uh, the mass went from two point five to two point one. Yes. Yes. Well, that's uh, zero point four grams. Yes. And so the moles will be zero point four divided by the RMM, which is forty six. Yes. What does that come out as? Do you have a calculator? I don't have a calculator. Somebody got one there? Down by your right hand. There's a calculator by your right hand. <laughs> yeah. So is that 0 0.008 or something? Okay. So with that, we know that, uh, I can't remember the numbers, but 0 0.008 moles produced 42 kilojoules yes that was it wasn't it so let me just uh, let me just see if i can do this so then what we do is we then say uh, i'll draw it on a piece of paper here Uh, so the answer comes out as, um, hang on, uh, 42, sorry, I'm not using a phone, I'm using a phone, not a calculator. So the answer is 5,250, is it? 42. Sorry? Approximately 5,000. Approximately 5,000. Yes? Okay. So what was your problem? Because that, that's the answer. So the answer would be whatever it is, 4,900 or whatever it is, about 5,000 kilojoules per mole. And it will be negative because it is exothermic, because it is burning. Combustion is always exothermic. What's wrong? Something. Forty, and if we divide them, we are going to get four million eight hundred and thirty-three. Ah, no. If were you using forty-two thousand joules? No. Let hang on. I I will just go back. Let let me just let me just unpin you and. I'm just going to go back to my, if I can find my sheet. La la. Right. Um, hang on. So this was back. Okay, here. Yeah. 
Okay, so what we said was that okay here's here's the beginning of the here's the beginning here and we said here we have uh, the uh, alkanol here and it's uh, burning we worked out that it was 42000 joules yes 42000 joules and we divided that by 1000 to make 42 kilojoules then we said here are the masses before and after which gives me 0 0.4 grams so 0 0.4 grams produce 42 kilojoules but i want it in kilojoules per mole and this is much less than one mole 0.4 is much less than one mole so one mole will be much more than 42 kilojoules so what i did was i said okay this here because the uh the the ethanol has a an rmm of 46 my moles is 0 0.4 divided by 46 which is this here 0 0.009 ish okay yeah happy with that so then this is this is whoa hello this is the this is the major bit so i say okay if i have 0 0.00 this here and it produces 42 what would one mole produce so what i'm doing then is saying okay i go 42 divided by 0 0.0086 uh, all that yes and that comes out i think let me just have a look 42 divided by 0 0.008 what was it 696 six nine six that's four thousand eight hundred and twenty nine four eight two oh well no thirty actually sorry it's thirty to to uh to no decimal places kilojoules is that not what you've got Ushurika? is that what you've got now ah okay so so what so does that does that satisfy you is that okay now no okay <laughs> come on ask again you you're very muted say it again what were you asking when we were finding the enthalpy solution and we took 200 times 50 times 4.2 divided by the mole right and did it not come out as for whatever it is 4800 the mole reactive now we don't know where you've gotten that your mole uh, well, you're putting them all underneath. So you're putting 0.4 divided by 46 underneath. So that's the same as bringing the 46 to the top, isn't it? Um, if you want. Um, but yes, that. Tr try it again. Try. It. I know, I know, I know, I know. Listen, you're going to get, if this is a three mark question, you're going to get two of the marks for showing how you do it not even getting one one right answer okay you're going to get two-thirds of the marks for get for showing how you do it but i don't I, i'm going to have to do the calculation here i can't remember the numbers hang on it was um 200 uh 50 times 4.2 divided by 0 0.4 divided by 46 Close brackets. Yeah, it's 4,830. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, 4,830. Oh, good. <laughs> You're a... Uh... The uh, girl in the nice tracksuit at the back says, yes, she got it. That's good. Are you okay now? Are you happier now? That's good. Okay, Asante. I'll see you later. 
I'm now going to go to Silver Spring because they have a question. Okay, but I'll say okay. you, we can see what they want to what they want to ask. Hi guys. Silver Spring. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Have you got a question? No, not really. Oh, okay. Well, it's very nice to see you. There's a question from Glory. Okay. Yes, I'm just coming to Glory. I'm just, I'm just coming, just coming over to you. I'm just uh, pinning each one of you in turn so I can see what you're doing. Okay. Hi, Gray. I like the way you wear, wear your tie. That's very smart. Okay, what's the question? Uh, you've muted. Uh, let me see. Hang on, I'll have to try and pin you because it's not making it very big. Why won't it pin? Hang on, I'm just having problems seeing your stuff at the moment. Come on. Sorry, just a moment. Um, having it. A... Okay, uh, hang on. Uh, type of water hardness. Okay, yeah, I can see it on my other. Oh, hang on. I'm just coming back now. Hang on. All right, and that's water sort of calcium, sodium. Okay, name the type of water hardness. Okay, describe one precipitation method. Okay, yes, got it. Okay, so what the water hardness question? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, there are two types of water hardness. I think you know permanent and temporary. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, permanent hardness always has calcium or magnesium ions and uh, not hydrogen carbonate ions. Okay, not hydrogen carbonate. I'm still seeing your piece of paper. Can you, can you see me? Okay? All right. So I'll just share, I'll just share my screen. Let me just show you what it what it looks like. The Bluetooth device is ready to tell. The right. Um, it's always got calcium uh, or magnesium. They both work the same. Then a permanent uh, has its calcium sulfate, calcium nitrate, calcium chloride. Then we have what we call temporary. They are not actually permanent or temporary. Um, Temporary is calcium or uh, uh, or magnesium hydrogen carbonate. Okay, hydrogen carbonate, also called uh, bicarbonate. Now, temporary, this here is removed by boiling. So uh, I don't know who's I don't know who's unmuted at the moment, but could they just mute just for a minute? So temporary is removed by boiling because when we heat this, it forms calcium carbonate, which precipitates. OK, it becomes a solid and water and carbon dioxide. But when you have and in your question there, I think they had calcium ions and nitrate ions. And that means they are thinking it is permanent. Now, permanent does not mean permanent. What permanent means is it cannot be softened by simply boiling. OK, so it can't. So, oh, well, what am there? It doesn't matter. So you've got calcium ions and nitrate ions in the water. And the nitrate ions are unimportant. It is this, the calcium, which makes it uh, very hard. So the best way of removing it is something called iron exchange. Have you come across iron exchange? Yes. OK, so what happens is that we have a pipe, uh, a tube, and in the tube we have some chemicals 
uh, and they are basically a uh, lots and lots and lots of pieces uh, of uh, like often it's resin uh, like from trees you know and stuck to that are sodium ions and it is so it is iron exchange so the calcium comes in at the top and it comes in and it swaps and out of the bottom comes sodium ions so at the end you would have sodium ions all the calcium sticks I'll, I'll change the color so it's more obvious hang on so we have all this all this stuff in here and on each one of these right on each one of these there are many sodium ions attached to the resin whoops and the calcium comes in let's see if i can make this a bit smaller so the calcium come oh lordy lordy come on come on ah oh, come on oh it's very annoying my my drawing is being annoying i'll do it again so this is the resin and attached to the outside of it is sodium ions in the tube many many sodium ions and the calcium comes in and it goes down and it sticks to the resin and the sodium is released two sodiums to each calcium so the water becomes comes from being ca2 plus aq goes through the resin and comes out as na plus aq so it has removed the calcium and the calcium sticks to the resin does that make sense so the the method so the type of water because it has calcium and not hydrogen carbonate but nitrate that is what we call permanent hard water and it is softened with an iron exchange which uses sodium to swap for the calcium. Is that okay? Cool. X.